This is Houston Newsmakers with Cambrell Marshall. Quorum is apparently not present. And just like that, the Texas legislative session ground to a sudden halt with no quorum present after Democrats walked out over disagreement about Republican efforts to pass what they call a voting security or integrity bill. Good morning. Welcome to Houston Newsmakers, where the end of the Texas legislative session is one of our big topics this morning. Words matter when describing that controversial bill known by most as SB7. Here's how much of the nation sees it described. The New York Times headline says it contains some of the strictest voting provisions in the country. The Washington Post calls it a restrictive voting bill. The Texas Tribune headline says it is a sweeping voting bill to restrict voting hours. The Wall Street Journal said Texas Democrats prevent Republicans from passing a restrictive voting bill. So what's actually going on? Well, among the many bills being considered by state legislatures across the country, those dealing with voting are high on the list. The Brennan Center for Justice is a nonpartisan law and policy institute at the NYU School of Law and reports that more than 20 laws passed this year will make it harder to vote. Here's a breakdown. The Brennan Center reports that in 14 states so far, 22 laws have been passed that restrict voting access. They also report that 28 bills with voter expansive provisions have been passed. The truth, according to the Brennan Center, is that there are just under 400 restrictive voting bills being considered in 48 states, while there are 880 bills that propose expanding voting provisions. But the attention in Texas is not on the expansion of voting provisions. As KPRC2 anchor Zion Rhodes explains, the Sunday night walkout by Democrats was because of what they consider voter suppression. And we killed that bill. Yeah. Texas House Democrats walking out of the chamber Sunday night in a dramatic move that blocked the passage of Senate Bill 7 just hours before the end of the legislative session. A quorum is apparently not present. Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick criticizing the Republican House leadership. So you mismanaged the calendar and Senate Bill 7 should never have been on the floor with four hours to go uh, before the midnight deadline. And it gave the Democrats an opportunity to filibuster or walk out. And that's what they did. In a tweet Monday afternoon, the governor said he will veto Article 10 of the budget, which funds salaries for the legislative branch, adding no pay for those who abandon their responsibilities. Lieutenant Governor Patrick says the governor is trying to incentivize Democrats who might be mulling not returning for a special session. So if the Democrats won't come back in the Texas House, they're going to have to let all of their employees or hundreds of their 150 House members. So you've got hundreds and hundreds of employees, all the staff they have that would lose their paycheck. In Harris County, party leaders on both sides say they're already gearing up for the next round in the battle. You can bet all of our grassroots activists are going to be contacting them. Uh, of course, there's been a total flurry on social media about this and people are really upset. We need the federal government to really step in and prevent prevent state Republican lawmakers from continuing their attacks on our democracy. The Democrats walked out because they were losing a vote. You know, you run for office, be man or woman enough to take the losses. You don't walk out. We cannot and we will not accept this piece of legislation. The Election Integrity Protection Act, as it's known, would ban drive through voting, limit early voting hours, end mass distribution of vote by mail applications and empower partisan poll watchers. Democrats argue the bill would make it harder for people of color to vote in Texas. This is true voter suppression. You've heard it before, Jim Crow 2.0. Republicans say the bill is about election integrity, even though there is no evidence of widespread voter fraud. Some of this is in direct response to Harris County, but most of it um, is just simply making sure we have you know, secure elections. The secure elections refrain is similar to what's being pursued across the country, primarily by Republican legislatures, and there's no lack of partisan banter about that. But I'm going the academic route this morning. I'm joined by Dr. Mark Jones, a senior a fellow in political science at the Baker Institute for Public Policy at Rice University, live in person here. <laughs> and Brandon Roddinghouse, political science professor at the University of Houston, is joining us via Zoom. He specializes in presidential and uh, Texas politics. Good morning to both of you. Thank you for joining us. Hey, Hey, I'll start with you, Dr. Jones. Um, the Democrats walk out delayed SB7, but there is, is there any doubt that this is going to pass? It'll pass at some point, uh, whether it's in the summer special session or in a fall special session. I suspect it'll be reduced and curtailed a little bit. Uh, 
taking out the more objectionable parts of it, such as uh, limiting or starting early voting on Sundays at 1 p.m. instead of earlier in the morning, and some of the uh, robust uh, required our powers uh, for poll watchers that would really allow them to do things that could really adversely affect the ability of vulnerable Texans to vote. But I suspect they'll keep in some of the components, such as a ban on drive-through voting, a ban on 24-hour voting, which, while reducing voter participation, are not exactly Jim Crow 2.0. Mm -hmm. That is, prior to 2020, we didn't have drive-through voting, and we didn't have 24-hour voting. Dr. Roddinghouse, your thoughts about um, this is a part of what's going on across the country, um, it, 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 and our lawsuits are going to be filed against all of these. Your sense about uh, the legitimacy of them and whether they can stand up? Well, typically courts have given the state legislatures a lot of deference in terms of how to write voting laws. So challenges are going to be tough to combat in this way. The battle is really political. And I think, like Mark said, this is definitely a case where the Texas Democrats simply don't have the firepower. They may have won a battle on the ground, but they need air coverage from Democrats in Washington to be able to win this battle. And that's a tough sell. Politically, of course, they had to make that stand, but in terms of the legal process, in terms of the final outcomes, the likelihood is that a lot of this stuff is going to go. Well, earlier this week, I want to bring your attention to both of you. A hundred scholars who study democracy, they released a letter um, and they said that our entire democracy is now at risk. They say because some of the new election laws being passed are turning several states into political systems that no longer meet the minimum conditions for free and fair elections. Um, Brandon, asking you first, do you think that their concerns are legitimate or are they just a partisan group of folk who just want to push a viewpoint? I think they're legitimate. These are scholars who've spent their career studying these, and we know from comparative studies that these kinds of events can be really pernicious to democracy. And I'll do you one better, and that is that we're going to have redistricting coming up very soon, and in a special session, there's going to be a lot of wrangling in terms of where district lines are drawn. So we're going to see another round of very partisan infighting because this is that time of year, and redistricting brings out the knives and both parties. It's not unusual, is it, Dr. No, no. Jones, to see this in Texas, and now it's even more divisive than ever. Right, and that's uh, unfortunate going into, especially as Brandon mentioned, we'll be doing redistricting in the fall, and I think we're likely to see Republicans uh, really focusing on a very strong partisan gerrymander. This will be the first uh, redistricting where uh, there isn't the constraint of the Voting Rights Act, particularly Section 5 of the Voting Rights Act. After Shelby v. Holder in 2013, Texas no longer has to seek preclearance. That is, get permission from the Department of Justice or Federal District Court for its maps. So Republicans will really only be limited on how risk-loving they want to be in terms of aggressively drawing maps to either expand their majority or protect it, but they pretty much have carte blanche in drawing tailor-made districts this fall. That's a new phrase for me, how risk-loving they will be. I'm going to write that one down. Thank you. <laughs> hey, there's much more being considered in Austin this session, and while SB7 has grabbed the headlines most recently, other laws were passed and signed into law that will affect the lives of many Texans. We continue that conversation after the break when Houston Newsmakers continue.